pretty much everybody in the fight sports world is trying to figure out what happened this past weekend when we saw Francis Ngannou almost defeat Tyson Fury. Many of you actually believing that Ngannou won the fight. If you look at it in terms of boxing, not just like the fight who did more damage, if you look at it in terms of just strictly boxing, boxing rule set, round by round, I think Fury won it. I do. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that because Nagano did an amazing job. But what most people are trying to figure out is how did this happen? How did somebody who came from an MMA background jump in against one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, or at least that's what they were calling Tyson Fury beforehand. This guy comes in from MMA and just surprises Fury, us, just the whole world just completely shocked. So what happened? That's what we're going to talk about today. The main thing that I really noticed when I was watching that fight that really surprised me was Naganu looked like he just didn't care. He didn't care about the strikes coming at him. That's not to say that he just stood there and just like, oh, I'm just going to eat shots. He did a very good job of getting his head off the center line. When he'd finished punching, sometimes he would roll. He was evasive in many ways, but he did not back up. And when he took a shot, he was not scared to continue on with the fight. And that for me was the big point where I went, whoa, this is different than I thought it would be. Because I figured Tyson Fury was going to come out, use that long jab, wrap him up, use the long jab, throw some shots, eventually tag him hard, and then just throw off a bunch of pat punches, just, just rattle them off, and drop Nagano. But that didn't happen. Why didn't it happen? Well, yes, I didn't think that Nagano was scared, and that allowed him, this is the most important part, to get the counters going. Because when we watched this fight, the first two rounds, we saw Fury controlling it, maintaining distance, kind of the way I thought it would play out. Then we get to round three, and we see Naganu throw back that left hook. He's in the middle of taking some shots, he does a little bit of work, and he throws back that left hook and gets the knockdown. After that, that's where the fight really changed. He stopped worrying about Tyson coming forward and blocking shots and then throwing the counter and he transitioned to, he's coming, he's punching at me, I'm just gonna throw back. I'm just gonna throw back. He was not even waiting for the punch combo to end or trying to find this middle ground where he's like, okay, shot, shot, attack. It was just like, he's punching and I'm gonna throw. And that's why I think the counters were so dangerous. And I think, and I could be wrong, but I think there's just this understanding sometimes about the way we're supposed to do things in fight sports. And Naganu almost wasn't playing by those rules. He was just going, okay, you can throw, and I'm going to throw at the exact same time. And I don't care what you're going to do to me. And we saw as the fight progressed, Naganu looking pretty fresh, minimal damage on his face, and we see Tyson Fury looking a little bit battered up. For me, that was the biggest and most surprising thing, to see Naganu just go, I'm here, I'm going to stand and fight, and to see Tyson Fury being the one like, oh, okay, whoa, we're in my element, but something's off, something's different. And we could say like, oh, okay, there's lots of reasons for that, like Naganu is just so strong that it just threw Fury off. You know, when we get to the clench, Nagano is used to fighting on the inside, standing wrestling, he's been on the ground, he's done MMA, done the jiu-jitsu and the wrestling, even though that's not his forte, but he's been there. So maybe that experience helped him on the inside, but either way, you could tell that Fury was thrown off in some way. And I think the main reason was Francis was just simply not scared. He did not care about the attacks coming to the point where he's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta be backing up. I gotta be very evasive. I gotta time time and then throw back. No, it's just more, I'm gonna stand my ground and as soon as I see him move, boom, I'm gonna throw back. It was shocking. It was amazing. And where do we go from here? Do we need a rematch? Probably not. Why don't I think we need a rematch? Yes, I already said that Naganu maybe on the cards didn't win the fight, but he went above and beyond what anybody thought he could do. So I think he's already proven that he belongs in the top 10 of the boxing heavyweights and deserves to fight some of these other guys. And if he can do the same thing that he did to Fury 
against somebody like Deontay Wilder or Anthony Joshua, if he can do that to them, now we have to look at this guy and go, UFC champion, walked away on top, jumped to another sport, giving all these guys hard fights. Greatest striker of all time? It's not too far out of the realm of possibility to think that. So if it was up to me and I said, dream matchup, you can put him against anybody you want, I would say let's go with Deontay Wilder because I think Deontay will stand there, will throw big shots. He's not as much on the clinch and he's not as much into that sort of bounce around like we see Fury do sometimes. He's gonna stand, he's gonna fight and we really get to see what Nganu can do. That's just my personal hope. But I just, I really think at this point that Nagano, with the amount of money he just made and how much his name just exploded. Like granted, he was the UFC champion, but his name just exploded this past weekend. For him to go back to MMA, it doesn't even seem worth it now. Like he left as the champion. He left as the best in the world. Who's he going to fight? John Jones? Maybe, I guess, but I don't see that fight happening. It's, it's just the UFC is not going to play that game. They're not going to let him. And Naganu would just need to get so much money now. So you got to put him in the boxing world and you got to put him up against somebody who's top notch level. There's no, oh, we're going to build this guy up now and give him 10 fights before he goes for a world title. Next time, get him a world title fight. I don't know if that's possible because I think Tyson, Tyson Fury and Usk have all the titles but maybe they can make up some other title because they do that all the time. Anyway, that's my hope for Naganu, and I was just blown away by his ability to just stand there and be like, I don't care what you do, and I'm just gonna throw back. I thought it was awesome. Anyway, guys, let's call it there. Well done to Naganu over the past weekend, and looking forward for sure to seeing him back in the ring sometime soon.